So a few weeks ago, I posted my 2021 reviews and goals on Instagram. I got a comment from Royal, who's been watching the channel for quite a while. Thank you, by the way. And he mentioned that he wants to see a video on the Metaverse ETF. So here we are. If you guys are new here, my name is Fezzi. This channel is about finance and investing. Before we begin, this video is absolutely not financial advice. Please do some research of your own as well. Let's jump into it. So Meta is the Metaverse ETF by a company called Round Hill Investments. Now, the main thesis is that the Metaverse is going to be the next big thing and it's going to take over the internet as we know it, which is a pretty bold claim, a claim which may even prove to be true in the future, who knows. So before making this video, I had no idea that this Roundhill company even existed because there's so many ETF managers out there, but in a nutshell, what this company does is that it invests in themes of the future, right? It's targeting those areas, mostly relating to digital themes and tech. In terms of their ETFs, they've got Nerd, which is the eSports ETF. That's a pretty interesting name. Bets for sports betting and subs for the streaming ETF. Of course, referring to people who stream on Twitch. They obviously want people to subscribe to their viewership or their channel, which is a, a very fitting name. And once we scroll down, we can see, of course, the Metaverse ETF, the Byte ETF and the MVP Pro Sports ETF. But the other two interesting, the most interesting ETF from this you know, ETF provider we can see the deep value ETF and then the meme stocks ETF, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Now, these guys actually seem to be pretty serious about this. You can see that they've even got a meme index, which this ETF is tracking. So they're pretty serious about it. And just in terms of what this ETF is tracking, it's got all the, the meme stocks that got absolutely pumped last year. It's got stuff like BlackBerry, GameStop, which got absolutely, you know, smashed upwards. And then of course it's got AMC. It's pretty funny how these two ETFs have emerged just from Reddit. Like the deep value ETF refers to the guy that was deep effing value. His username was, he was tracking the price of GameStop. He's the one that actually figured out that GameStop was severely undervalued. So that's the ETF name that relates to his, you know, username. Then you've got kind of meme stocks there as well. So it seems that this ETF manager is being very opportunistic about it, which, you know, more power to them. I hope it works out. I hope people are actually investing in this ETF. Now, jumping back to the Metaverse ETF, we can see that it is tracking the Ball Metaverse Index. Now, there's many definitions for the Metaverse itself. One definition is the fact that it's going to be an experience that kind of combines the virtual world and then the real world at the same time, which is going to be pretty interesting. There's going to be a virtual economy of people, you know, joining in all around the world. There's going to be virtual worlds where you can pretty much do and be whoever you want to be. You know, if you can't create the experience in real life due to money issues or social issues or whatever it is, you can probably create those same experiences virtually and still kind of experience it. This ETF is focused on companies that are providing the computing power necessary to actually make the metaverse happen. You've got networking, virtual platforms, which is of course a very big one. The metaverse is going to be largely virtual. So of course you do need companies that are focusing on the virtual side of things. You've got interchange standards, payments. That's pretty important as well. If you're going to be transacting in the metaverse, you need to have companies that can provide those services. So you can convert the fiat currency, which is dollars to the virtual currency and back and forth. Next, you've got content assets and identity services. This relates to, you know, stuff like NFTs and other kind of content and assets. Then you also have hardware, which is very important. You know, if people are going to be wearing those, those oculuses on their, on their head, then of course that's pretty important too. Now, look, I just want to say I've been gaming for the past, you know, 15 years or more. I've played games like Counter-Strike, RuneScape, League of Legends, and Call of Duty. And I just want to say that this whole concept of the metaverse isn't something that's new. It's been around for quite a long time. Let me explain. We've got RuneScape that's been around for over 15 years. This game has its own virtual economy, its own virtual trade system, and you can use money to buy things. And it's a very kind of comprehensive system. You've also got Habbo Hotel. I used to play this game quite a while ago, and this also has a virtual hangout space. You can pretty much have your own apartment in this hotel. You can pay real money to buy virtual things, virtual furniture, virtual decorations to, you know, really make sure and make your apartment your own. There's even virtual in-game bars that you can join to meet other people and virtual games that you can play. So, you know, this company has been around for over 15 years, almost 20 years at this point. So it's not really new. And the last example that I want to give is Second Life. This is another virtual world where you can do whatever you want. You can be whoever you want. There's hangout spaces. And this game has been around for quite a while as well. And now all of a sudden we can see that big tech is jumping onto it. So now it's being rebranded as the metaverse. Now I do think that with big tech money involved, these experiences are going to be better than ever. 
the graphics of these games aren't exactly the best, but if we have you know big money behind it, big investors behind it, we will get to see experiences that are gonna be, that are gonna be much better than what we've seen in the past. So at least in that aspect, in the graphics aspect, I am looking forward to what they can create. These days, some of the biggest projects in the metaverse space include stuff like Decentraland, Axie Infinity, and my favorite, which is Sandbox, which is the one that I'm looking into currently. Now, this is pretty interesting because you can buy NFTs and these NFTs can be displayed virtually inside the actual game. You can pay real money to buy virtual currency and this currency is a cryptocurrency which you can use to spend on in-game experiences. And you can actually earn this currency just by playing the game. Yes, you can play play to earn games, you can play games and earn these cryptocurrencies as rewards. In fact, people in the Philippines and Vietnam and Venezuela and other developing countries like that have pretty much played games like these to earn a living. Of course, it's not gonna be a lot by Western standards, but it does provide them some sort of income during those times where they can play these games and earn cryptocurrencies and then of course sell those currencies for their own fiat currency. So as you can imagine, this whole metaverse thing is pretty insane. The fact that people in developing countries can make a living of sorts just by playing these games and this whole metaverse thing doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. Looking at some high level details for the ETF, we can see that the primary exchange is the New York Stock Exchange. The fees are 0.75% per year, which is gonna be about $75 per $10,000 invested. The assets under management are about 849 million. Shares outstanding is 66 million and the launch date was 30th of June, 2021. So. Of course, it's only really been about seven months since this ETF has launched. Number of holdings is 45 and these holdings come from seven different countries. Now we're gonna look at the holdings for this ETF and this is a thing that I really wanna stress in this video because this is what you're getting under the hood, right? ETF managers have a huge incentive to give their ETFs really cool names and really cool you know, ticker names so people can buy into it but it's very important to understand what's under the hood of these ETFs. So let's have a look. Some companies we can see with the highest weighting are Facebook with almost 9%, Nvidia at 8%, Microsoft at 7%, Roblox, Unity, TSMC, and a few other companies down there as well. Now this is fine, but do understand this. If you buy this ETF, there's a high chance that if you're already investing in America, you are gonna have overlap in your portfolio. In my opinion, this whole ETF can be summed up as a mix of ASX NDQ, ESPO and Asia, right? So if you're investing in these three ETFs already, chances are you probably already own like most of this ETF's holdings. Of course, you're gonna have different, you know, weightings between those companies, but you're probably gonna be overlapping quite a bit if you do buy this ETF. Now, if you do buy this ETF, you will get exposure to some companies that are not included in those other three ETFs, some companies like a few Japanese companies and a few growth tech companies there as well. But apart from that, it is gonna be very highly overlapping between those three ETFs. And because of this reason, since I already kind of invest in those three ETFs already, it doesn't really make sense for me to buy this ETF. Therefore, for the time being, I'm not gonna be buying it, but let me know what you think. Now, if you're just looking to get exposure in the metaverse, it may be worth checking out the actual cryptocurrencies that underpin these projects, right? There's cryptocurrencies for Decentraland and the Sandbox and some other ones out there as well. So it may be worth checking those out. And if you are feeling super bullish and if you are happy to take on a lot more risk and you have a lot of money, you can actually look at buying virtual land in these metaverses as well. Of course, it costs you know tens of thousands of dollars, but it may be worth it if you're interested. Looking at the returns for this ETF, we can see that it is down about 15% from its previous original listing price and it's not doing too well. But of course, if you look at the broader market at the moment, especially the NASDAQ 100, that's not doing well either. So of course, it's just a similar effect happening over here. The themes of this ETF mostly relate to stuff like gaming platforms, computing components, cloud solutions, social networks, and of course other, which is just random stuff like software, hardware, computing, networking, all that sort of stuff. The holdings are very concentrated in the US at about 81%. So of course you can see why the share price of this ETF hasn't done too well at the moment with a few other countries in Asia and Sweden at 1%. Market caps in this ETF are pretty much large cap companies greater than 10 billion. Now, when it comes to my thoughts on the metaverse, I am somewhat bullish on the metaverse and where it's going generally. We can see companies are literally pouring billions and billions of dollars into these projects. So, you know, it is worth looking into for sure. Personally, as I've said, I'm not gonna be investing in this ETF, but I am looking to invest and looking very closely at the actual cryptocurrencies that underpin those projects. So. Yeah, I might make a video on those in the future if you're interested. Now, if you enjoyed this video, check out these two videos right here, which are quite similar. This is a Crip ETF from BetaShares and this is a crypto mining ETF 
recently listed so go check it out and guys thank you for watching please like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye now the geography strongly